Hi guys, welcome back to Data Every Day. Uh, today we're looking at a data set of ice creams, um, ice cream flavors. It comes with images um, as well as uh, um, CSV file containing information about it. Uh, but basically what we're going to do is we're going to try to see if we could predict the average user rating based on the ingredients that are in an ice cream. And of course, we, we could if we wanted to uh, couple this with like image data from like a convolutions from one of the photos. But we're not going to do that today. We're just going to try to use uh, the ingredients list to predict the rating. And it's a bit of a weird task, but uh, that's what we're going to do. So given data about various ice creams and their ingredients, let's try to predict the average user rating of a given ice cream. And we'll use a linear regression model to make our predictions. So. I'm just going to uh, copy and paste the imports in here and we're just going to use NumPy pandas uh, and then we're going to do for pre-processing we'll use regular expressions uh, the Porter stemmer from the natural language toolkit and uh, multi-label binarizer and train test split from sklearn and then for our model uh, we're going to use linear regression and ridge regression and you know why don't I include lasso as well? We'll see how that performs. Okay, so I'll import those, and then I'm going to load the data in, so we can. Uh, so th there's five folders, uh, and one for each brand. But then there's also a combined folder that has all the brands. So I'm going to use the combined folder, and I'm going to grab products.csv from the combined folder, and load it in to data using the pandas read csv function pasting in the file path. So we'll take a look at it and this is what we're starting with. We have a brand, a key, a name, a subhead, a description, a rating, rating count, and ingredients. So all we're going to be using today is rating and ingredients. So everything else I'm just going to drop. And actually, um, although we don't have that much data, some of these ratings are just too unreliable like these rating counts some of them are under 10 and that's we're not gonna we're not gonna be able to uh, use those because I mean we could but it's just not a lot of data not a lot of information and in general this probably isn't going to do so well simply because uh, we have so few examples if we have more data maybe we could uh, have a better chance Alright, so I'm going to drop those rows. So data.drop. Uh, we're going to do, we'll keep brand actually. Brand has some useful information for us. But we'll drop key, name, subhead, description, and rating count. Actually, we'll save rating count for a second. So we're going to drop those from the column axis. And save that in the new data. Now if we look at it, we have, we're left with this. And what I want to do is find uh, how many of our rows have under 10 ratings. So we can use uh, the query method from pandas. And we're going to query for um, rating count less than 10. Oh, what happened? Oh, I, uh, it should be rating count, not counts. All right, uh, interesting. So it looks like we only have a few, um, but we probably want to drop those. Let's see, okay. So yeah, we have five different rows where the rating count is less than uh, 10. And that's okay, I think um, 10, we're dropping five examples. Still not great to drop any, but I think this makes sense. For example, this one we certainly don't want. A rating of five, uh, but only two people rated it. Like, uh, how how much is this really gonna be accurate? Like this, could, someone else could come along and say that they hated it, and then it suddenly goes down to a 2.5. So, um, yeah, or something, I don't know. <laughs> Let's just remove these. So I'm going to call these, or if we get the index of this, it'll just list the four indices where we have um, 
uh, rating count under 10, and then we're just going to data dot drop all those indices, and uh, sorry, not index, axis, axis zero. So this means we're dropping the rows, and then anytime we drop rows, we also want to reset the index, and we specify drop equals true to keep us from adding the old indices as a new column. All right. So now we should have 236 rows and the same columns, and now we can drop uh, rating count. So data.drop rating count axis one. Okay. All right, so this is our data. So rating is our Y, and then we're going to construct features from uh, brand and ingredients. Ingredients is obviously going to take a lot of processing. Uh, brand will just be a simple one hot encode. So um, I'm going to make this function process ingredients and this function took me a long time to figure out how to write because there's just so much going on in this ingredient list. Uh, before we write this function let's um, go ahead and say this. Okay, So we're going to add all unique ingredients uh, to a set called all ingredients. So I'm going to make that here, all ingredients. It's a new set. So the benefit of using a set is that uh, it can't store duplicates. And order doesn't matter. Um, Alright, so what I'm going to do is we're going to iterate through the rows using pandas iter rows. So for row in data dot iter rows. So iter rows returns uh, a tuple containing the index and the rest of the row. So it will return a tuple for each row, this comma, uh, and then the rest of it as a, as a panda series. So what we, if, what we can do is say row right here, row uh, sub zero will give us the index and row sub one will give us the series associated with that index. Okay, so for each row, um, we're going to say, okay, data dot loc row sub zero, comma ingredients. What that will do is say, okay, uh, basically just say uh, get the ingredients list. So this right here is equivalent to the list for a given row. All right, and what we'll do with this is we're going to call it ingredients. And then for each ingredient in ingredients, oh, actually, this is uh, ingredients. We'll start with ingredients.split on commas. So you can see all the, the um, ingredients are separated by commas. So if we split it on commas, we'll get a list uh, where each element is a value between commas. And then we iterate through that. So we call that the the iteration ingredient. So we'll go cream, skim milk, liquid sugar, and so on. Um, and then if ingredient is not, uh, sorry, not is, <laughs> if ingredient is not in all ingredients, then all ingredients is going to get ingredient added to it. So what this will do is, by the end, all ingredients will have every unique ingredient in the entire data data frame. Uh, so we'll run that and check out all ingredients. And this is where we run to the problem. The problem, as you can see, there's all these problems with it. We have um, like annatto and uh, color and for color is actually the same ingredient, right? Uh, we've got all sorts of problems. Uh, cocoa and cocoa process with alkali, you know, even this, there's a, there's a parenthesis at the end, which is making them distinct. So, um, yeah, look at all the different egg yolks we have. And we also have and in there, which those should be two different ingredients stored in one. So just splitting on a comma is not going to do it. We're going to have to make this function process ingredients that's going to run through and apply all these different transformations to the data to get us a nice um, ingredient list.
So I'm not sure if I want to run through the whole thing. Um, I'll give you a few examples here. Let's grab one of these. Uh, let's say, okay, data dot look zero comma ingredients looks like this. All right, uh, if I grab that and I'm going to go to regex101.com, paste in that string, and this is a beautiful website that lets us use regular expressions to see how um, it would affect a sample string. So I'm using regular expressions uh, to try to capture all the parentheses. So what I want is just to remove anything that's between parentheses because um, that's not really the ingredient. It's like sub-ingredients of an ingredient. And I think we'll be just fine using the uh, major ingredient and leaving off the minor ones. So this is the one I use to target any parentheses. It's saying basically find a parenthesis followed by anything uh, followed by another parenthesis. And there we go. We have three examples of that. And what we do over here, uh, right here, is um, we're go basically going to say this new ingredient, a uh, new ingredients, is going to be, a s we're going to substitute um, any occurrence of this regular expression within ingredients with nothing. So we're just deleting it, essentially. And I'm just going to paste in what I have because there's just so much. I end up applying all these different regular expressions and uh, removing all these little special characters that came in. Um, if you want, you can pause the video, take a closer look, and go try these out on regex101.com. But uh, yeah, there was actually this one, even one special exception where milk fat was uh, had a space in some of the ice creams and no space in another. So I basically just painstakingly went through and found all the different. Uh, problems with it. But at the end of this, we end up with a pretty nice list. And it's important to note that we're using this um, ps.stem, which comes from the Porter Stemmer from the Natural Language Toolkit. And what that does is essentially takes all words and breaks them down to their root. So that this significantly reduces the duplicate uh, problem. That we, so if we have eggs and egg, they'll both become egg. And um, that will be applied to a lot of different words. So uh, if I use this, and then down here, instead of using ingredients.split, uh, what we'll do is ingredients is now going to be process ingredients of that. So we're processing the row first, and then we're iterating through it. And we're using this to process it. So uh, I misspelled it. Okay. All right. Now, if I check all ingredients, we have this proper list of ingredients, um, and they're all lowercase and they're all clipped. You can see uh, concentrate has to be, to become concentrate, uh, and we don't have any problems here. I mean, at least uh, I could pick up. If we do, it's it's very minimal. I I looked through this a bunch of times. Um, Right, so I also noticed that we have this at the end. So what I'm going to do is just, well, remove it, I guess. I mean, I don't know if this really matters so much. <laughs> this feature doesn't do anything for us. Um, but yeah, so this would be our list, all ingredients, or our set, rather. And then we're going to go back to the data. Uh, and basically what we want to do is um, encode this. Uh, we're going to process each of these lists into um, a processed version. So let me show you actually. So we had before this was this was the original data. And then if we use process I ingredients, so this is showing what happens on a single example. Uh, you can see it's the same thing, but processed properly. So everything has become uh, like a standardized version of the ingredient. And we've also removed any parentheses. Remo uh, we removed any um, like and ors and replaced them with commas, any ands replaced them with commas. And then at the end where it says the allergen information contains dot, 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 we just removed all of that as well. Um, I noticed that that always comes at the end of the uh, 
line, so that's why I put end line character. And then, um, yeah, this one was interesting. Uh, sometimes uh, different uh, ingredients, uh, sorry, different like, like for example, a, a ice cream might have like caramel clusters and then the main ice cream and they have different ingredients. Sometimes it would end with a period uh, and then um, be followed by a colon to say the caramel clusters. Uh, and then you can have a new set, list of ingredients. So what I did is I just uh, removed that um, new label and added all the ingredients together, if that makes sense. Um, so right, okay, what I'm gonna do is process the ingredients list. So I think we can split the data here. Y equals uh, data dot loc rating, actually, uh, all rows and rating column, and then x is going to be data dot drop uh, rating from axis one. All right, now we can like totally work on this x uh, very nicely, and all we're going to do is one hot encode this, and then we're going to process these and multi use the multi label binarizer to to um, create columns for them. So I'll just make a one hot encode function, which will take in a data frame, a column, and a prefix. And I've made this function a bunch of times, but basically we're going to make a copy of the data frame, create a, a dummies data frame using pandas.getDummies. So it'll just be the dummies columns for df sub column. And we include the prefix here. And then uh, we're going to concatenate the data frame and the dummies along the, the axis one for the column axis. And then we're gonna drop uh, the, col the original column from which we created the dummies. And at the end, we'll return the data frame. So now we can say, uh, well, just one hot encode brand, x equals one hot encode x brand, and we'll give it a prefix of b. So now if we look at x, you'll see that brand has become four new columns, uh, a one hot encoded version of the original column. Now we can just uh, mess with this ingredients part. And what I'm gonna do is, okay, uh, how about we do this? We'll say, hmm, okay. I'm gonna process them directly. I'm gonna say x sub ingredients dot apply process ingredients. And we can literally, instead of using a lambda function, just pass in the function we created, and it will apply that function to each element in ingredients. And if we look at what that looks like, oh, I misspelled it, two, th three S's. It, it will just take each one and convert it to the list that we want. So x sub ingredients equals that. Now x should look like this. We have these nice lists instead. And what we'll do is um, I want to go, okay, so the way the multi-label binarizer works is it goes through each of these values and finds all the unique values and then creates new columns for them for each unique value, similar to the one-hot encoder, but each uh, row can contain multiple ones in those columns. So it's like one-hot encoding, but each example can have like a one here and a one here instead of just a single one and zeros everywhere else. So uh, with that, I will, um, be, because it does it in that fashion by going through and finding the unique values in order, if I go through and find the unique values in order, I can get the column names for those uh, binarized columns. Because uh, when we use the fit transform function from the multi-label binarizer, it will return a NumPy array and that we lose the column name information. So it can be useful to create our own column names, we'll call it ingredient, ingredient columns. It's gonna be a list, empty list to start. And then for each ingredient list in X sub ingredients, so for each one of these, um, uh, then we're gonna iterate through the ingredients within a list. So for ingredient in ingredient list, uh, if the ingredient is not in 
ingredient columns, then we'll append it to the end. And this is very similar to what we did with the uh, set earlier, but now we care about the order. Okay, so at the end, this should look like uh, just like before, except now the order is the order in which it's found through the data. All right, so um, let's see. Okay, we're gonna make a new data frame called ingredients data frame, ingredients df. And it's gonna start off just being the ingredients column of x. Okay, and then we're gonna create the multi-label binarizer called MLB. That's from sklearn. Now we're going to use mlb.fittransform on our ingredients df. So it's going to apply those transformations, create all the new columns, but uh, by creating its own separate df, we don't have to worry about this these other columns getting in the way. So it's just going to do it on this this isn't actually a data frame, this is a series, right? Because I I sliced um, a single column from a data frame. But because um, we're about to make it into a data frame, I called it DF. Originally, it's not DF, though. Okay, so we transform it, and that will make it a data frame. But, uh, sorry, it'll actually make it a NumPy array, like I said. But we have to, so we have to turn it back into a data frame. And the column names will be given by ingredient columns. All right, so we can call the new ingredients df will be this. All right, we run that, take a look at ingredients df. And now we have each, um, each uh, unique ingredient has its own column now. And if a given ice cream has that ingredient, it'll have a one there. All right. Um, I wonder if my column names are, are wrong. It's very possible that my column names are wrong and that I, I misjudged the way that the binarizer works because I my guess is that every one of these ice creams should have cream, right? So maybe this is not actually the cream column. If any of you know how the binarizer chooses the order of the columns, I'd love to uh, know the answer to that. Uh, but I guess for the meantime, we can just remove the columns. So we won't, we won't have column names. So it'll just look like this. Um, and I guess we don't need this. All right, that's a bit unfortunate, but we still have all the data encoded in here. and. Uh, we can now say, okay, so our x x looks like this. We're just going to concatenate the ingredients data frame onto the end of x. So uh, x equals pandas dot, hold on, equals pandas dot concat x and ingredients df. And we're concatenating along the column axis. Then we're going to drop the original ingredients column. So what we'll do is we're going to take um, all these ones and zeros and just put it right on the end of here. And then we're going to drop ingredients. So right there, run that. Now we look at X. We have all the brand data. Oh, no, no. What happened? This is not right. Why do we have more rows? Oh, no, no. What, do I, what happened here? OK, let's try this. Okay, give me one second. I'm just gonna rerun up to this point. That shouldn't take too long. That's already done. All right, so I'm just trying to figure out what ha what went wrong here because you notice this has the wrong number of rows. Okay, so let's see what happened. I must have made a problem with the binarizer. Uh, all right, let's take a look at ingredients df. So up here, um, so it should look like this, okay? Good. That has the right number of, of rows, right? 
Uh, and then we use the binarizer on it. So if we just made a sample version, no, this is giving us the wrong, the wrong thing. Did I make a mistake here? I don't understand. How is this possible? I did this exactly the same way. All right, give me one second. I'm gonna figure out the problem. Okay, I'm not really sure what uh, went wrong. We, it seems our code works now. Uh, just going to run it again to show you. Uh, we're gonna make this ingredients. What happened? Oh. All right. Okay. One second. We're gonna make this ingredients uh, data frame here. That's just gonna be the. Uh, it's a series of the lists. Then we're gonna multi-label binarize it, and we'll get the data frame of the binarized version of those ingredients. Then we're going to concatenate the original X, which currently looks like this. And we're going to put this right on the end, and then we're going to drop the original ingredients column. And that will give us this. So that we have 236 examples and 358 columns. All right, and now with this, we are ready to use it in training because it's, it's already scaled, right? So we don't have to worry about scaling it. It's all because they all take values between just 0 or 1. And our y is uh, a series of ratings that, that we will try to predict based on these features. And um, I think I should probably mark this down a little better. So at least I'm going to say pre-processing. OK. And then at the end, we can just say over here, uh, modeling. Oh, I'll just say training. OK, so uh, we're going to split the data first um, before we train on it. So that will use the train test split function. Split it into train and test sets. X train, X test, Y train, Y test equals X, Y. And we give it a train size of 70%. And we'll give it a random state as well. How about 100? Uh, what happened? Why is that invalid syntax? Train size equals 70%. Oh, I didn't call the function. <laughs> Sorry, I'm messing up today. All right, train test split is from sklearn. That will split it for us. Okay, now we have our four different sets of the data. We can create, um, first we're gonna try it without regularization. So regularization will tell our loss function not only to worry about the difference between our predicted values and the real values, but also to worry about uh, not letting any one feature get too big. We're gonna try to keep the feature values, uh, the, the weights for the features low. And we're gonna create our first model, which will be uh, linear regression, which we imported from sklearn, and we're going to fit it to the data, x train, x test. No, sorry, x train, y train. Okay, and we'll get the score on the test set, x test, y test, and that is unbelievably bad. So this is an r squared value, which measures like how far the data is from our fitted um, from our fit, and it's it's supposed to be positive, and <laughs> we have a, a insanely negative value here. So I'm gonna try it with regression, and we'll we'll do it with uh with L2 or ridge regression. So here we'll make our uh, L2 model. It's gonna be ridge regression from sklearn, and we're gonna. Uh, we're going to fit that one as well to see if we get any better results. Uh, and before I actually score it, it's important to note um, that this takes a parameter called alpha, sometimes called lambda. Um, but basically, it's a regularization strength. How much do we care about minimizing the values of the weights? 
So um, I'll fit it with, it. this is the default value. We'll see how it goes. Uh, and it looks like we did just as badly. Oh wait, no, I'm doing model.score. Okay, we did significantly better. So this is close to zero. It's a huge improvement from this. So if I set this to zero, we should get this, uh, well, it's not exactly the same, but um, it's it's quite bad. If I, by uh, setting it to one, we'll get a better value. And then actually increasing this gives us uh, better and better values. I was testing this out up until, wait, yeah, that's 0.1. This is uh, 0.07, and I think 1,000 gave us the best, which is 0.06. If we go to 10,000, we end up with 0.7 again, 0.07. All right, so this is the best we're able to get with uh, L2 regression, and then I didn't try this before, but I'm going to uh, with L1 regression, or also called lasso regression. And so this will be L1 model equals lasso. And we specify the strength again. So the difference here is that this uses a, a squared error to calculate. Um, sorry, it tries to minimize the squares of the weights, whereas this tries to minimize the absolute values of the weights. Uh, and L1 model is going to no, dot fit uh, on the train set again. And then L1 model dot score x test y test. So I don't know how this is going to go. Uh, but it looks about the same. Let's try turning it up. Uh, let's see if we get anything better. No, it doesn't seem to be affecting it so much. What about point 0.1? Oh, that's actually even better. Point zero 0.01. No. So point 0.1 is giving us the best results. Overall, it looks like uh, ridge regression is giving us the best value for our square that we can, even though this value is still pretty bad. Uh, it's it's a, it's a far far cry from this. <laughs> so um, yeah, I think that sums up today's video. Um, I know we didn't really get great results, but it was a bit of a strange task. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy the video, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell for more content, and leave any comments in the section below. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a fantastic day.